Welcome to this episode of The Blade Boys. I'm Ted Flett. I'm Ed Das. And we are going to break down today the what we think will be the key storylines in the ladies' event in the 2016-2017 season. Myth and I have both done a great deal of consideration, reflection. We've looked at old tapes. We looked at the tapes of... Uh, Tapes. Why am I calling them tapes? Tape. The oh video, the footage. You're aging us. I know. I'm so oh my god. <laughs> I'm aging myself. Uh, of all this, uh, of, we're of looking all... at our VHS tapes of like <laughs> yeah. Michelle Kwan in like 1995. <laughs> totally. We're putting them in our rewinders <laughs> yes. to save our save the heads of our of our VCRs. Yeah. And uh, uh, yeah, so we're looking at you know who are going to be the key players in the uh, in the women's event uh, this next season. Myth and I have not shared who we forecast uh, are going to be the, uh, the the names to watch. So we've done some beautiful artwork uh, in terms of uh, audio or in terms of visual presentation. Yes, of, of, it's all about the artistic of, of presentation. Who we think are going to be key. So yeah. we're very slowly like raise these for the big reveal. Okay. Wow, we got quite a bit of difference here. If you can even read mine, so oh yeah. Uh, well, well, I'll present mine first. So Evgeny, Men- I think the the favorites who are going to get the gold stars this season, or the ones to watch who are going to compete against each other, will be Evgeny Medvedeva and Satoko Miyahara. Mm-hmm. They're big challengers. Uh, I expect will be Mao Asada of Japan and Ashley Wagner uh, of the United States. And then the the dark horse, the ones to watch and we're not sure about, will be Gracie Gold, Russia, Carolina Costner, and anybody from Russia. It could be a multitude of names is going to pop in there. Uh, it could be Yulia Litvitskaya, Alina Rajanova, uh, Elizaveta, Adelina Sotnikova, Anna Pogorolaya. The list goes on and on. It won't be Paulina Terskaya only because she can't compete this year. Yes. But, but she would probably be, she would definitely actually be a contender. Yeah, if she was, she would be a contender. This same preview episode next year, we'll be talking about her oh, you know, ad nauseum, I'm sure. So, Myth, tell me who you've got. Uh, so, I, for my favorites, uh, chose Yevgenia Medvedeva, um, Satoko Miyahara. Mm-hmm. And for the challengers, I chose Anna Pogodilaya, uh, Elena Radionova. Wow. And for the Dark Horse, I picked Ashley Wagner. And this sounds nationalistic, but I actually chose Gabby Dillman. And we will get into wow. why. Bold, I, bold. But see, it's a Dark Horse pick, right? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. you know, I, I gotta, I gotta I like throw, I like a little, throw a little curveball. I know you're probably wondering why there's no Mal Asada on here. <laughs> You have rolled her out. She is off your list. Um, and and we're gonna that, get into that too. That big that big yeah. choke at worlds. You've just you've you've lost uh, you've lost faith. Oh, I haven't I haven't lost faith. But there's we'll get we'll get into it. Okay. But like, okay, so, so starting at the top, you have Jania Med- Medvedeva, the reigning world champion. I mean, she hasn't lost her stride since uh, she won worlds. She had an amazing skate at the Japan Open, her free skate to extreme loud and incredibly close, which. To me, it's a very unconventional choice. Um, I think it's a good choice. The some of the sound effects are a little bit like it's a bit heavy. It's a bit heavy, yeah. It's a bit heavy. And it's a bit heavy, and it's like it's one of those like. I mean, Schindler's List was kind of heavy when Yulia Lipnitskaya did it, but she found well, a way yeah. to like make it work given the subject matter and given like you know the, the obvious sense of pathos throughout. Um, and, and she was a girl in the red dress. So and she was a girl, coat, yeah, well, there you go. Yeah. Um, but Yevgenia, she, I think it was like her program last season where it was like, um, I guess the blind person waiting, the deaf person who can hear the blind yes. person. Yes, no, deaf. Deaf, right. yes, the, yes, but, so, da, 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 da. yeah, exactly. So, she, so she's not afraid to do like, not the war horses of like, Carmen yep. and all that stuff, which is great. I mean... I mean, I'm all uh, I'm, for I'm, that, I'm, but... I'm, I'm, I'm not going to lie, I miss my Carmen. You miss your Carmen? <laughs> I'm sure there might be somebody doing it this season. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Um, <laughs> anyways. Uh, Eugenia, she's she's done... She's made some changes over the summer. I think her program, for, like, they kind of still have that same formula, which is a winning formula, but sh- whatever. Hey, if it's working, you out here to try to win some competition, so if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But... I've noticed she's added more interesting transitions. She's um, 
her her expressiveness has actually gotten a little bit better, I think. Like, yeah, I mean her her it's obvious and, and she's I think very it, confident now, which yeah yeah uh, very confident. Her body has not changed, it appears, which yeah. I think in these also sorts of, in these formative years is pretty key. Satoko's has. Mm-hmm. I mean, when I first saw Satoko, I didn't wreck. I was like, that's Satoko Miyahara, but yeah. she's still got. I mean, she's her jumps have not uh, eluded her. I don't think I don't think either skater is unbelievable in terms of their execution of the technical jump of the jumps that they perform. Uh, I know that Evgenia does impressive jumps in terms of triple triples and does the triple, well, triple, 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 like she can add it. She can continue to add triples forever as she has done in practice and we've seen online. Uh, But she, and of course she does the triple sow cow, triple toe sort of after the midway point in her long program and does all of her jumps in the back half of her short program. Mm -hmm. So all of, I mean, the, the, the jumps she's attempting are tough her layout is tough. I don't think the landing, I don't think the speed and the height and the arc of the jumps is something that I necessarily go oh, at to the same extent as, say, a Gracie Gold. Uh, but uh, she's definitely getting them done. Nothing's cheated. Hand is usually, arm is usually over the head to capitalize on the execution. execution. Um, we've talked before, at least I've said, that uh, this to me was not a Yuna Kim level uh, skater, although she has surpassed Yuna's um, scores, so she did have an the, extra triple. The judges clearly love her; they're picking up what she's laying down, and I don't think that's gonna. That does not appear to 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 to, to, to be changing over the course of the season. And I'm okay with that. Like, Yevgenia is only in her second season; she's still a teenager. Like, I think it's it's unreasonable to compare her to like a Wagner or a Nasada or a Kim. Or a uh, Costner, or like you know any of the um, you know putative artistic mature skaters, right? Like the ones who who have that level of maturity and um, expression. So I think it's I think she's working with what she has, and that's all you can do, right? Like it's like it's I can't fault her for that. I'm I don't I, th- I don't think she's trying to be something that she's not, which I think some some. Some of the Russian skaters, they their programs are a little bit too older for them, and yeah. no, they're not really, true. and this they're not age appropriate. So yeah. I think she's doing stuff that still shows an artistic range, certainly like a from a program selection range. Yeah, like, the material is unique. The material and she's, commi- is and she's committed and to she's it, one hundred percent. Which is which is, I mean, kudos to her for doing that. I think um, Eteri Tutbrudze is quite good at getting her students to choose piece of music that not everyone else is doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, you saw it with like Sergei Voronov um, and of course Yulia Lipnitskaya. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's, it stands to say that Yevgenia should probably dominate the season. Uh, I honestly can't picture anyone other than Satoko potentially challenging her. Satoko, of course, her, as you said, she's grown and I think it's actually enhancing her jumps. Her jumps are still very quick, but I think she's able to like get the athleticism on it now and not as much rely on like super fast rotation. Okay. Some of her jumps are arguably still pre-rotated. Like, getting back to like the Shoma quad flip argument, mm. I personally don't really look for that like with such scrutiny as other people uh, tend to do out there, which is fine, but it's just not something that I, that ruins a performance for me or, mm-hmm. or like... Some people use words like, oh, I cringe every time I see that. I'm like, no, you cringe every time you slow it down to like like every millisecond frame. And then we're like, oh, oh, oh there it is. Right, I'm cringing. Right. Like, yeah, yeah. In the, in, honestly, in a performance, like in real time, it's, it, it shouldn't ruin a performance. If it does, sorry. But like right. for us, it doesn't. And I think Satoko, her, te- her technique on her jumps is still very solid and very reliable. She is going back to like the triple S triple toe instead of just doing the double axle triple toe, which is perfectly fine as well. I mean, it works out to essentially the same base value um, because you don't get more points for triple toe on a Lutz versus a double axle. Uh, So she's, so she's actually showing that like she can, she, she can actually still execute the hardest technical elements, which is what I think she needs to do to hang with, uh, somebody like Yevgenia, who's doing like the triple flip, triple toe, and mm-hmm. triple sal, mm-hmm. 
uh, triple toe. Yeah, I mean, she. It, I think her her career is on an, her her competitive career is on an interesting tra- trajectory, if I can say that, because uh, she broke through as the world silver medalist in two thousand and fifteen. Mm-hmm. I certainly wasn't expecting it. I'm not sure that she really was silver medal caliber, but the way the event laid out, that's where she landed, and then she really held tough. I think last season she didn't capitalized to the where she got really nailed on a couple under rotations and so forth and there's been lots of controversy as to whether the judging was fair in boston or not mm-hmm. uh but, she was very know, close to the podium like she yeah did, i mean so she did quite she did very very well last season and i think she's, she was extremely she's loud and incredibly watch. close to that podium there you, there you go, go there you go so we both got as uh, as challengers slightly we've gone in different directions so i picked mao asada and ashley wagner kind of you know, sentimental favorites, I suppose you might think. You've got... I got a little... You got, you got, you got, you got, got a little Russian. Russian. You got, I got a Russian duo. So talk to me about your picks. Okay, so Anna Pogorilaya, I think she's on the upswing. For a while, she would get in her head, she would get unconfident, and she had this, like, ice queen, like, demeanor to her, which made her programs seem very aloof and not... Mm-hmm. Not the most fun to watch, honestly. Yeah. But, like, last season, like, she channeled that sort of, like... It became from Ice Princess to sort of like, like you know, Ice Queen, like kind of a bit aloof, to this kind of fierceness to her. Like, mm-hmm. it, it, like she, she became really confident in herself, yeah. and I think that really made the difference. Uh, arguably, she should have won the silver medal at Worlds, but I'm glad she finally won the world medal, because like, I think she was robbed a couple of years ago. But um, she's, already, she's already lighting it up in... in the challenger series this year i think she now that she knows she has the confidence to be a world medalist and essentially like the number two russian she's she's still turning it on like she still has her series her triple sockhouse series she has her triple triple uh triple s triple toe to open i think her spins could still use a little more improvement and a little bit more finesse to them but uh she the difference is now I'm noticing is that she looks like she wants to be out there and she looks like she's like ready to compete and she, like her head's in the game. And that's Interesting. And that, and that's I thought, I mean, I certainly thought at the world championships, what was sort of, you're right, like what was the ice queen? And I still, I'm still fascinated by an ice queen, frankly, but it was an intensity and her short program, I mean, coming second to Gracie Gold and ahead of Evgeny Medvedeva, yeah. whoever would have expected that at the World Championship. I actually thought she should have been first. She did it. <laughs> that first oh. program. But I, I did not. I was definitely <laughs> picking up what Gracie Gold was putting down in, the, in Boston. However, uh, I my sense is that uh, as much as I'd like to think that Anna Pogorelaya has, you know, has moved away from those horrible spills and chokes, one competition for me doesn't sell me on her potential this season. So... Yeah. She'll be someone to watch. I didn't put her as a as a top pick. I think her. World... I think the bronze was a bit of an anomaly, and I'm not sure. I'm not as confident as you are in her confidence. Yeah, I think I think with Yevgenia being above her, she's now. She, I think she's starting to be hungrier and realizing that, like, okay, like I've got to bring my A. And also with like such a saturated Russian field, um, it, it's really hard. Uh, which brings me to Yelena Radionova. And the reason why I have her as a challenger is because, like, last season she had some technical issues and she's also, like, her health hasn't been the best. And even this season she's going through a couple changes. So maybe she might not be a challenger, but I actually think she's always been a reliable competitor and she just needs the right vehicle for her. Um, So it's... I've always been a, a fan of hers, and I think that once she sheds this sort of juniorish quality to her, the judges will really appreciate her basic level well, of yeah, skating I just, and, and, and I, I her attack. Her, I and, find her interpretation just so over the top. I mean, Titanic last year and her short Yeah, program, Titanic was, wasn't a good program. It was just, it was too much. It was, you know, I was trying to get behind her at the beginning of the season because it did seem as though it was going to be... Yeah. The season was going to be her versus Evgenia to the end. Yeah. And then Sotoko broke ahead and, and Evgenia and Radjinova, I think, was put where she, the ranking where she should be at world at the World Championships. I think that was kind of set right in terms of how she was performing all season long. And I think, for example, when she beat Medvedeva at the Cup of Russia, like, she looked 
absolutely delighted and she looked massively relieved and surprised. I don't think she was expecting that success mm -hmm. at the Cup of Russia. And so I think she even senses in herself that, you know, her skating is not where it was in 2015 to the Sorry, 2014, 2015. Yeah. Uh, and whether it gets back there, I'm not sure. And I do think as soon as like, there's any blood in the water in Russia, the other shark, the other ladies, just boom, they're there. And I think she's shown that, that she's, she's not the invincible uh, Rajinova that she once was. And I think other skaters will, will, uh, will, will, will take advantage. Yeah, I mean, that that is definitely possible because, like, yeah, you're right. She isn't as sharp as she's been before. But, like, I, whenever I see her go on the ice, she always wants to be there. She always wants to put on a show. Like, she's enjoying herself. But, like, she, like she will land that darn triple edge, triple toe if her life depends on it. And if she doesn't, then she'll tack on that triple toe too. Like, she, that's that, the yeah. thing. Like, she just... She's a fighter. She, she's a fighter. And as we, as we, like, to, as we like to call her, she's gritty, not pretty, right? Like, she's not... <laughs> right. She she will always tough it out. And that's why I'm saying, like, she'll be a challenger. Not because I think she has the best programs or is even... Um, like, she has really... Like, you know, she does have other great elements outside of her jumps. Like, her spins are really nice. Um, but... I know she doesn't have that maturity, or and the, the arms just the, the arms flail a little too much. And and her grade of execution on her jumps isn't as good, which is why she is trailing behind hmm. people like um, Medvedeva. But who knows? Like I think I don't know. I'm still rooting for her. I think yeah. I, I wouldn't count her out quite yet. Okay, so I've got as my key challengers, I've got Mao Asada and Ashley Wagner. So Mao, of course, returned last year uh, and had success at the beginning of the season, and then it petered off. My sense is that she's got the competitive juices now running again. Uh, there was some doubt at the World Championships that, you know, or some question whether she'll continue, and she said, I'm absolutely in this until 2018. So Good. her spirit does not seem to be broken, and, you know, she has definitely hit tough seasons before. Uh, this was by no means, my, uh, this was by no means her, you know, her worst outing, uh, or this last season. She's, she's plummeted from grace many a time before yeah. and come back. So yeah. my, I have confidence that she's going to be able to do it. She can still land the triple axle fully rotated uh, in practice and sometimes in competition. She hasn't given up on that. Uh, the under rotated jumps are still a problem for her. I'm hoping that she's going to continue to plug away and correct that. But even for example, you know, the uh, the triple-triple combination the short program last year was constantly getting dinged for being mm -hmm. unrotated. So she abandoned it altogether for the, you know, for the World Championships, went to a more consistent triple-double triple, triple -double combination for a grade of execution. Uh, you know, the short program is just a mess in general, unfortunately, mm -hmm. for her. But so she's a strategic skater that knows, you know, what to do and, and when to push and when not to. Uh, so I haven't lost my faith in, in Mao and her competitive ability. And then Ashley Wagner... You know, she hit a new high at the World Championships last year. I think it helped to solidify herself uh, as a major contender, a main contender. It was a bit of a surprise. I mean, I thought the rankings or the... the I thought it all went as it should have. Uh, yeah. I thought Ashley landed where she should have. I think her components are exceptional, and mm -hmm. I'm glad that that balanced out, you know, the step out on the flip or the... I think it was step out on the... Yeah, it was. Flip. Yeah, it she, was had, an she had two small problems yeah. on on yeah. inner free skate, uh, but girl has been hanging. She tight. stayed on her feet though. So she stayed on her thing. feet, and uh, she and her short program is completely clean. So let's not forget that. And she yeah. followed up with a strong performance at uh, at the team challenge as well. And I think she's got great material again this year. Short program mm -hmm. by Annie Lennox. Long program, the name is escaping me, but it was Jeremy Abbott's music from 2012 and then 2014. Mm -hmm. uh, Exogenius or something like that. It's something, something like that. that. Something yeah. like that. But also with lyrics, because of course now lyrics are allowed. Uh, and I think it's it's showing a, a different sort of edgier, soulful side of, of, of Wagner. So uh, she, I think, you know, she knows how to grit out a performance. Like you talk about a skater that you know, has problems and then, you know, let's go all together. Mm -hmm. uh, like Patrick Chan, for example. Uh, she can mess up a little bit and then keep her head in the game and keep pushing it out, unlike her main rival from the U.S., Grace Gold, who, as soon as one 
problem occurs, it tends to snowball, and you know, and there are other problems uh, mm -hmm. that that emerge. So that was my way of transitioning into one of my dark horses because I've got Gracie Gold, Carolina Costner, and you know, all of Russia basically as uh, as my dark horses. So Gracie Gold. Uh, I mean, I, I think she's still a major, she's still a major player. Uh, you know, there's something about, I think she was fifth in 20, she was fourth at the Olympics. She was fourth in 2015. She's fourth again in 2016. Mm. She, but she, she was, really should be getting, for how talented she is, she really should be getting like much better results. But yeah, she's had, she's had injuries and like setbacks. And also like, again, like her focus has been like an issue in, in, in her skating, um, She'll set herself up like, like, to to succeed like at Worlds last year where she was where she was first. But yeah. then, her free skate it, like it's, it's very like it's it's not very often that she delivers two clean programs if ever. So yeah. like this season that I think that should be her goal to deliver two clean programs. Sometimes she just I feel like she gets in her head about like what she needs to do and she just she just kind of needs to trust her talent and her technique. Yeah. Um, as soon as the game plan seems to get, you know, go off, you know, go off script, then it, it unravels and she's not able to sort of put her head back in the game and get the rest of it done. Because yeah. I really thought, I thought with the one error on the triple triple uh, in Boston for the, for her short pro long program rather, I thought, you know what, if she skates clean from here on out, she could still salvage a medal. And she almost did, even with the second mistake on the double lutz, mm -hmm. uh, until Ashley Wagner took the ice as the final skater. Like, talk about nail-biter yeah. drama. Uh, but and she was really hard on her, so I feel really bad for her. I know, that, that was... Like, that was really... Like, but you know what, she need, just needs to, like, get it off her shoulders and, like, move move forward and realize that she, she's still very talented and she just needs to find herself and find... What makes she needs to, I think, focus just on what makes her skating special, mm. and not just and not not necessarily worry about like the elements and like you know I know there's the saying of like you know take it one element at a time, element to element. I think if she really envisions herself in that like you know I'm a champion, I am. I can be a consistent competitor. I have some of the best jumping elements in the world. Mm -hmm. Just let it happen yeah. instead of like thinking, oh shoot, I have a triple flip. Make sure like the edges right, like that sort of yeah. thing. Like and then, it then, then it sort of gets yeah. in her head, right? Yeah. And that's and that can derail a skater. And because so, her practices, she she apparently skates really really well. And but you never want to. And the show program in Boston was was incredible. Oh, I mean, for sure. The, yeah. To score 76 was amazing. Whatever you think of the scoring, whether it was inflated or not, and I don't think it necessarily was because I think she had the total package in Boston, but the judges are, when Gracie puts it together, the judges are willing, ready, yes. and able to reward the heck out of her, even though she hasn't won, you know, a Grand Prix final medal. She hadn't won a world medal before. She hadn't won an Olympic medal. You know, they're, the scores are absolutely there. The numbers are there for her mm -hmm. for the taking uh, when she rises to the occasion and stays on her feet. So, and of um, course, there's like other like U.S. skaters who are like, like Mariah could have very well been a dark horse given her like amazing short program that she just had in her Challenger Series event uh, just totally. recently, like seventy three points, which is of course like that would have exactly. <laughs> that would have put her in like I think the top three in like Worlds last yeah. year. So, but. The only reason I didn't include her along with Mao was because of like the potential for under rotations and mm. I don't know I you might have noticed I'm a bit of a numbers guy <laughs> so like I I like I lose faith in skaters when yeah. when I see that they're getting dinged for under rotations because as much as as great a skater as they are and as much as they might have a triple axle or something like that if you give away those points on your next jumping pass with like an under rotation yeah. like doing a triple double because and getting the grade of execution great but like you those extra points for, for doing a triple axle instead of a double axle instead of doing like five extra points you've given back like four of them by like doing a triple double instead yeah. of a triple triple right well, and, and unlike you know unlike Mao for example Mirai doesn't have the same kind of uh, competitive history. Mao no. has three world titles, so yeah. I mean, I think Mao would have to do something pretty egregious not to be sent back to the world championships. Yeah. Whereas Mariah, I mean, I think wow. Ashley, Gracie, and Polina in the U.S. have really sort of broken away from the rest of the field and created their own sort of trifecta, <laughs> so to speak. And I think Polina just needs to now do that, you know, gain those results internationally. 
Mariah and the others are, you know, they're all nipping at their heels trying to get in there. But those three, I think, are, you know, are really the example. I think Polina is set to make a bit of a splash, too. Like, I didn't include her, but she's got a good, like, Grand Prix series, like, lined up. Like, mm -hmm. she doesn't, she's not in, like, the Shark Tank of Grand Prix events. So right. she has the potential to surprise. I, would, I wouldn't be surprised if she made, made it to the Grand Prix final. I mean, Ooh, she, bold, yeah. Bold, bold, bold. I like. I like, it. I like I'm it. not saying she will. I'm just saying I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> I would be surprised. Um, no, I I think she has a lot of talent, and I again like, um, it's about just executing. Yeah, I'd be surprised only because she just hasn't been able to. It's not that she hasn't capitalized, but she hasn't. She's either made one or two mistakes that have held her back, or the judges just are not yet picking up when she's laying down yeah. and giving her the component scores. And the grade of execution scores on her, on her jobs. And you know how you have like Russia as your I like Star basically. Wars? Well, of course. So you're... this is so this really what I wanted to put here was Canada, like because okay, okay. any of the Canadian ladies like they had the potential, maybe not to win events, but they had the potential to really shake things up. I think Gabby Daleman, for example, she just laid down a fantastic short program in her. Um, Challenger Series, and she got, like, great credit from the judges. I think her triple-triple this year is, like, one of the best triple-triples of all time. Mm. Like, and, like, if you see, if you see it, it is massive. Like, I was, so, I don't, I don't, I don't even, I want whatever she's on, because, like, going, because something happened over the summer where she just turned her feet into, like, little rocket ships, and right. I was, I was, I was, like, I knew I knew she was always an aggressive jumper, and she yeah. would always go into things full speed and like without abandon. But like that triple triple really impressed huge. me. I was it's it was huge. it was kind of like it reminded me of like when Sotnikova needed a triple triple. Like she didn't have the triple at triple toe necessarily in her short program, but at the Olympics when she did her triple triple because it was just it was just so huge and so massive that it like the grade of execution and even at at this event like Gabby got like tons of plus threes on her triple triple mm. so that tells you that it's a pretty big element for her and if she can set herself up for um a nice spot in the long program remember at world she got 195 points last year which while it was only ninth in most like grand prix events 195 points will win you would would like win you or get you like pretty like essentially on the podium mm -hmm. if not win uh, so, and I think Gabby this year also has that competitor, like, she's now being like, okay, it's time, like, I need to be that number one Canadian woman, and Alain Chartrand also has the elements, she's very hungry as well, and Caitlin Osman is just looking to get a darn break. Yeah, like, see, I, it's funny, because I would have thought, if I was to put a Canadian on the Dark Horse list, it would be Caitlin Osman. I think now that Caitlin has the triple loop... Uh, as part of her repertoire, so she's got all she's got all the triple. Well, apart from the triple axel, she's got the other five triples. So she can do a full mm. seven triple program, and then also uh, the double axel. And I just feel as though, you know, her jumping and her speed and her uh, stature and character on the ice are like exceptional. I think if Caitlin Osm puts it together, she's absolutely top five in the world. She, she was fourth after the short program in two thousand thirteen yeah, yeah. with a clean short program. And that was with the triple toe, triple toe. She's now up the ante, triple flip, triple toe. And triple, it's just, she just cannot put it together. And I don't know what Caitlin Osmond needs. I hope very much that she's she's getting or Skate Canada. I mean, I think because we have such a strong, I wonder anyways, if because we have such a strong men's program, pairs program, and ice dance program in Canada, I wonder if there's as much tension given to the ladies. And I feel like if Caitlin Osmond was given as much as an athlete, as say a Patrick Chan mm -hmm. or others are given in terms of funding, support, coaching, augmentation, all that stuff, she could be number one. That's me totally. It's, spe well, it's, it's That's also me hard. speculating. It's also I have hard. No idea what happened. But it's also this. really hard to get momentum because you have had like your Joanny Rochette and your um, Cynthia Fanos, um, primarily in the case of Joanny, where um, you know she has like an Olympic medal and a world medal. Um, right. She was able to get that because she was able to consistently compete and. Right. That allowed her to like curry the judges' favor. Um, Caitlin hasn't had that. Because Caitlin of, because hasn't of had that because of but injuries, given, and so it's yeah. always set set her back, set back any momentum that she's been trying to achieve. Right. I think I like 
I, I said Daleman mainly because I'm really impressed with Gabby's competitive spirit. I'm sort of seeing something in her this season that I haven't seen from before, whereas Caitlyn is still a bit of a, a question mark for me, only because, yeah. like, <laughs> I don't want to lose faith in her, but it's it's almost like it's really hard to even get faith in her because she'll always, like, have some calamitous thing happen that is super unfair because she has all, of the, all the talent in the world. She could... I, she, again, she can definitely be like um, a world medalist if she got the consistency and if she got yeah. like if she pulled it together because the judges love her and she's unique. And I think the Gabby, speed that, the speed that she takes in and out of her jumps and her the confidence and crispness of her landings when she when she when, does, she's when she does them is uh, almost unrivaled in the world. I think it's right up there with. The likes of Gracie Gold. Yeah, I think in the Skate Canada will be really, really telling. Mm -hmm. Like, and Canadian Nationals, um, and obviously the other Grand Prix events that the, the Canadian ladies are on. Because uh, they they have, I think, they're going to be the spoilers. It's, it's kind of like the Canadian Paris. They're not really, like, top three material per se. But, uh, and, and... Outside of Jamal Radford. Outside of Jamal and Radford. Okay. But, like, somebody, <laughs> so, yeah, somebody, yeah, somebody, like... Seguin Bilodeau, for example. Yeah. Or more Towers Moscovich. Or more Towers Moscovich. Or, uh, no, more or Towers Mary Oh! Oh, whoops, my bad. He repeated it, though. Sorry. Uh, they did a little <laughs> Eugene just... Pang Zhang swap. <laughs> 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 All these pairs making, making us confused. Um, but, okay, but they always have... Like, they're in the mix. They're in the mix. They're in the mix. They're not... They're never really a favorite. Yeah. But I actually think Seguin and Bilodeau, though, I think they'll, they'll win a Grand Prix. That's... That, that's a prediction. You heard it here. That, yeah. heard, it from, heard it from me. I think they'll... Okay, back to ladies. But, um, <laughs> but back to ladies. I also think... I also think one of... I don't think one of the ladies will win... The Canadian ladies will win a Grand Prix, but I'm expecting, like, Grand Prix medals. I think last year was a surprise mm. when mm. Canadians would win uh, Grand Prix medals, but this year it's going to be... Oh, yeah. Like, you could, you could picture it happening. Yeah, like, I right. think they're starting to de develop their consistency, whereas maybe some of the other top skaters are sort of losing it as well. Mm -hmm. But it's hard to like again, like Radio Nova, she's not as consistent. So I could I could totally picture somebody like like a Caitlin Osman or Daleman skating lights out and then beating. Yeah. Like they would they would, off, they would need a lights they would need out. It, they would need yeah. a lights out and it, an off date. But yeah. it's 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 happened before us. So now I've right. added I mean I really went for all the sentimental favorites. I also rounded out my list with Carolina Costner as yep. a dark horse. Uh, so she's not in the Grand Prix series. She's possibly showing up for for Europeans and uh, World Championships. And I mean, she's a bit of a question mark. But from everything we've seen online, she's got the jump. She still has all the positioning. She's been touring, but you know, still executing what she needs to. She's apparently in a training camp with Alexa Machine. So she, you know, it looks like she's still you know pedal to the metal, and she's not going to make sort of a return in vain just because. There's a big gap in Italian ladies figure skating. Mm -hmm. She actually wants to come back and continue to make a statement. So that will be uh, fascinating and interesting to watch. Yeah, and of course you mentioned Alexei Machine. So we, like I can't. It would be remiss to not mention Elizaveta Tsukhtemisheva. Yeah. And um, again, well, and, this is her comeback season after like a disastrous second yeah. half of last. Well, and year. that's why I put Russia as a question mark, and not just yeah. because there's so many good Russian. Bro, you skaters. just want you wanted to cover off like cover seven, all the bases. seven, seven all the bases. skaters. Cover that's all the bases. Not, that's not fair. But, <laughs> but because I think the strength of the ladies program in Russia is such yeah. that it just makes them all so much better. Yeah. So even though there's just a whack of amazing skaters in lady skaters in the U.S. and Japan. Mm -hmm. There's something about the push in Russia that just makes them that much better. So right? Right? Like yeah. Anna Pogorelia, you almost think she was sent to Boston under the pressure that if you do not capitalize here, this could easily be your last, your last. Yeah, oh, right? well, and she did, <laughs> and she did. So I do think someone's gonna someone's gonna make it happen either yeah. through grit or through you know through might. It might be. You know, Tuktamasheva, Sotnikova is still in the mix, Lipnitskaya. I mean, the, Maria, so there. Maria Sotskova, I think, is also one there to watch go. as well. Like, she's she she has a couple of Grand Prix events this season, and she's changed coaches. So, she's changed coaches. Yeah. So, I think she's definitely one to watch as well. Like, she's not getting the same hype as like some of the other Russian girls, but like, there's like nine of them. So, it's 
And of course, you have Polina Sarkaya, who will most definitely uh, make a lot of a lot of the ladies relieved that she's still competing in juniors totally. but before, like she competes in seniors, and then Terry has to. It's like Rosemary's Baby or Sophie's Choice, where it's like, do I go with Yevgenia or Polina or like who am I? Yeah. Which of my prize horses am I? Am Polina I, is. Unbelievable. Oh, she, she's, she's she, her, de- her technician. I can't, I, I can't wait to talk about, we don't talk about the junior series as much. Um, also, shout out to Rika uh, Kihira, who is the first woman to like land an eight triple program. So that's another rising star coming out of Japan, which is why when he said Mal is like a sure to medal at Japanese nationals, I don't know. I think... No, yeah. not sure to, well, no, I'm not saying she's sure to medal, but because she doesn't have to win a medal. I mean, Japan works that way, right? You don't oh, have to win a medal yeah. to get sent to Worlds. Mm-hmm. I think it would be hard for them to make a case not to send Mao. I think we'd she have, really yes. chokes all season long. We would have to see how it works during the season. But that's what I like about the Japanese Federation. They kind of look at, like, season's results and don't look at closed-door skates and stuff like that. Right. Right. <laughs> not mentioning anyone. But uh, <laughs> I didn't say that. Um, no, me neither. Me neither. Me neither. Um, but but yeah, like I think I think it's gonna be an exciting ladies event. I think the ladies technical game is it's not like the men's where everyone's starting to do crazy quads now. But we're gonna start getting people like uh, skaters creeping up, like adding more technical elements. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's, the ladies event is kind of maxed out as far as. Uh, technical ability unless you start getting girls like Rika who can do a triple axel. Well, and sometimes I think it makes it more interest more interesting. I mean, when when a pair like say in the in the pairs event with do Hamilton Radford attempting technique and tricks that are such a tier above the rest of them mm-hmm. as the rest of the field sort of catches up. In the women's event, like it really like it's just splitting hairs in terms of point differences between and that can make it, you know, more exciting. Yeah. It, those nuances, the transitions, the spins, the spin, spin positions become that much more integral and mm-hmm. make it interesting to watch. I well I think well the thing is that like the la- like the ladies are some of them are just so consistent like Medvedeva that like you there's never really that one element like Malice Triple Axel that will make or break her wit. Like there's not right. that like drama moment of like oh my god here it comes well, it's like does. oh she just did her triple triple yeah. triple dope you never have to cross like you know you, you never have to like worry about it or you never have to be like oh god this is like a deciding moment right. in the ladies event because now everyone can do like two triple triple mm-hmm. combinations mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. like everyone or a double axle triple dope. like everyone is kind of maxed out so as you said it comes down to splitting hairs instead of like key moments of like oh god is this element gonna really determine uh, if this if this person's gonna win or like end up fifth or something yeah, like that, yeah. so. so interesting women's event to uh, to watch as the season unfolds. Uh, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, uh, comment here, and keep watching uh, our episodes. We love to hear feedback from you and uh, enjoy the skating season as much as we will. Yes, and if you're looking for more skating talk, uh, we have a lovely, lovely. Uh, site for you. It's called Golden Skate. We were mentioning it last season, and they have uh, discussion boards. They have uh, forums. They have uh, videos and threads, and yep. and cover way more stuff than we can cover in like an hour or whatever. Um, so yeah, go check them out as well. And uh, we look forward to uh, a great season and our next recap. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching.